What up, everybody? Welcome back into hockey's favorite podcast. That is right. You are listening or and watching the Pacific Revision. I am one of your hosts, Miguel. Hi, hello. How are you? Alongside me is my co-host, Eric. Say hello, Eric. You know, usually I don't care how people take in this podcast, but I hope they're watching today because I'm very proud of this shirt I bought. It's a nice shirt. Japanese Heritage Night uh, LA Kings shirt that I got. Uh, it, was a, it was a little a little bit of a quest to acquire, but uh, shout out to the people who got it for me. So you, had, you didn't, you paid retail for that? Someone did. <laughs> I was like, but did you pay retail for it? I'm not, I can't confirm nor deny how I got this shirt. Okay, there you go. He killed somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot confirm nor deny. I'm trying to incriminate me. Hello, Eric. <sighs> Nicole's seen a lot of a lot of cr- uh, criminal stuff that I think I'm, I'm kind of an expert now. Like the, the amount of hundreds of hours of different crime shows I've seen on Hulu. And I know what not to do. I, I know it's a hockey podcast, but... I always find it weird these people that love these crime and murder shows that that their personality is just watching that stuff. You know what I mean? Couldn't couldn't tell you. I don't uh, trust those people. I'm marrying one of them, so I'll let you know. Like like if I die, I'll know. There, I'll know. There, there's a show Nicole watches called Deadly Women, where it's just women killing their husbands and or boyfriends and or fiancés. All right. That's uh, terrifying. Yeah. It is. And, uh, you know, I, I know what not to do. What, one of the key tips that I've learned watching these shows, Miguel, one of the key tips is you do not get life insurance. And if you do, do not tell your significant other how much it is. Because then guess what? Yeah, three months later, gone. You're gone. Yeah. Oof. Goodbye. And you know what, Eric? You got breathing issues. You know how easy it would be to make it look like... You was, just have to just gently uh, like you know how like people smother like you've seen the movies like they have to like hold down a pillow with forts. Yeah. For me, it'd be like a finger under the nose and I'm done. <laughs> That'd be it. That'd be it. Oddly enough, you bring up my breathing issues. I've been going back and forth between in and out of the hospital this week. Yeah, it's uh, been horrible. It's been bad. Uh, but tomorrow I'm getting an MRI. Uh, to That's good. Out what, the what the hell's wrong with me? Because uh, I can't breathe. <laughs> That's yeah. That's not. I, I've been. I mean, I have slight asthma, and I've been having a lot of issues lately too. So I hope you get better. A pollen in the sand down there must be. I'm telling you, it might be Nicole. Do you yeah. have health ins- Do you have life insurance? Again, you know, thought after that. Thought after that. Thought I know, Nic- I know Eric- Nicole. I know Nicole watches the insurance. Can I confirm nor that. deny? <laughs> Can I confirm nor deny? <sighs> So we're coming off of the All Star break. Yeah, did you have a nice All Star break? I I did. Nice, relaxing. Then I have I, going a week and a half without having to watch your team lose is pretty nice. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I was about to say we can skip the whole segment where we talk about our teams because I got nothing for you. It's been yeah. <laughs> it's been ten days of like nothing, and they don't no, play yeah. for a couple more days. So I'm like, sure, Vegas. Don't Beat the shit out of Nashville, but that's it. Nothing much to talk about. Was... You, know, you know what? Before this, you were, you were yelling at me that I'm not nice enough to you about your team. Uh, yeah. Good, good win. I'm happy for you and maybe Logan Thompson. He seems nice. Yeah, I think he they, they held Nashville to 15 shots. Oh, so they're they're still on All Star break. Yeah, they were this close. They were this close to. Uh, Holding them down to the record season low, which Chicago currently holds at 14 shots in one game this year. Vegas had uh, had Nashville at six with 10 minutes left. And then Nashville just started spray and pray like they didn't matter where on the ice they were standing. Just shoot. Just and I'm fully convinced they were doing it just so that they don't get the least amount. This reminds me of us when we play NHL 23 and we go through like a period with one shot on goal. Like we need to just <laughs> get shots on that. Yeah. As soon as you are to the blue line, just whip it in just to up these stats. We got to look yeah. better than it is. We don't have too much to talk about there, but we can talk about the atrocious, horrible, maybe not horrible, boring 
All Star Weekend for the NHL. So let me let me let me preface something. To you. I did not watch the the All Star game live. I was working. Um, can we stop with the Saturday afternoon goddamn starts for the All Star game? I hate it. I hate Thank it. you. It's the it's worst. So... <laughs> Who? Who can watch the All Star game at twelve o'clock? Who wants to watch the All Star at twelve o'clock Saturday? It's, it, like, it doesn't make sense. Like I've, I've I, heard some arguments. Though. I went, I went, I went, I went researching. Right, I went to go look yeah. to scour the internet because maybe it's me. You know, am I the problem? You know, maybe the maybe the NHL doesn't want to cater to a thirty-one-year-old man who's working. You know, yeah. Uh, maybe it's for kids. But if it's for kids, uh. We got to We got to fill up those uh, those in arena stuff because the arena attendance for uh, Friday skill competition, Miguel, a little light. A little oh light my there, god! Man. It was a ghost town. It was like, a it was on a Friday, right? Yeah. Who people work on Friday at twelve o'clock? They do, but like, come on, like there should be there should be people for this. Like, I don't remember an All Star game skills anything or the game itself that hasn't sold out or looked full or anything but it looks sad i agree um, and, and i remember you 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 messaged out to like oh, i was watching the all-star game and i mean it's a problem when i think there's seven of us right and and there's a problem yes. when only one of us being you is actually watching the competition actively watching the competition live yes we all care about hockey. We all talk about hockey. It's probably the one thing uh, we talk about more than anything, other than making fun of each other. It's this goddamn sport, and none of us care about the, the event that has the, the, one, the stars in it. The only reason I watched it, because on Saturday I was working, so I kind of I was in and out, and Friday I was off, so I got to watch most of it, but I was just bored, bored to death. But the only reason I watched it was because I, I mean, aside from our love for hockey is that luckily it was on ESPN plus, which made it super easy. I'll give them that. I watched it on my mobile phone. The optimal which, way to, to You know what I mean? The well, the, the Saturday one I watched on my mobile phone because I was at work <laughs> on Friday, I was at home. I watched half of it on TV. Then I went. I went to my buddy's house to hang out, and I was watching it. I had, well, I, w- I want to say I was watching. It. I had it on in the car while I was driving, <laughs> so I was kind of listening to it and glancing at it every once in a while. And it, I want to like. I I don't like to complain. I don't like to to be negative about this stuff. Because again, we we enjoy this sport. It's fun. It's cool. <laughs> It's hip. Uh, we dedicate a lot of time to to all of this, but like, it just felt so empty. And and funny enough, that's how the arena was. But it just felt empty and shallow, just, and there was just zero like fun or weight to it to anything. I like I I just I don't know. It was the most like nothing competition and event that I've seen in a long time. It's so funny. So I feel like every these last couple of years, I feel like the NHL has been doing a good job and building mo- building momentum on the All Star Weekend. Like the, specifically the skill competitions, I, I feel like they've been fun the last couple of years. And then doing threes hockey is lots of fun. Yeah, but that lasted like four years. But yeah, this year, first off, the skills competition. Let's start there. Every year, it's a different competition. So, and every year, say, they try. I, I will say before you before you get going, here we go. I do yeah. like the fact that they do like one or two unique competitions pertaining to where they're at. Like last yeah. year was in Vegas, they did at uh, the twenty on the strip. Yeah, yeah, yeah on the strip it was twenty one, and then that uh, the the shooting competition on the Bellagio. On the fountains. Bellagio fountains, yeah, that's really cool. cool. Yeah, it's great in St. Louis. A couple years before that. Uh, they did like a little like ski ball thing that was in the stands and took. Like, yeah, where well, they shot it off. Yeah, yeah. that was cool. I, I yeah, like that one. Cool. This year they had uh, knock down surfboards and they knocked down either players or coaches into a dunk tank. Cool so, golfing thing. Cool, but like the dunk tank one, I, I it was a good idea, not a great execution in my opinion. 
Yeah, well, the problem is that they hit the surfboards a couple of times and they wouldn't go. And down. they didn't fall down exactly. Yeah. But, but I will say I do. I did enjoy the visual of when they would miss. You could see the puck curve and. Oh, I like know. Just fly the, out. It's just going into the ocean, which is kind of a good visual. <laughs> and like those are a little more lighthearted. And I, the I golf think, one was cool though. It was. Shout out to Nick Suzuki for winning a year at Chipotle for winning that competition. Uh, and what fun, did he say after he won? Back, no Chipotle in Montreal. <laughs> Although I'm sure you could sell that off to somebody. Someone will take it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can give it to like a family member. You a big Chipotle guy? Oh, I hate Chipotle. So do I. So do I. It's a disgrace. They are greedy on the fortunes. I will say chips and guac your their best thing. Yeah, that's which about, is that's, sad. That's, that's which is it. sad. Yeah. I but uh I don't know if I my biggest action. complaint about the skills competition specifically this year yeah is that they split up the competitions where Sorry. they were so okay so they do let's say the best accuracy shooter yes the best two will go to face on face to face or the top four I forgot what it was maybe it was top two it was Face to face to get the highest score. So they do the first segment, the first four, five, six, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not prepared. Went. McDavid went four for four. He got it on, on nine seconds. And then, okay, cool. Time for the finals. No, nope. before we get to the finals, let's do our next segment. Let's do the first shot of the golf. So everyone takes their first shot. Let's go to the next segment. Which is the? Uh, it was just everything was spread out. It wasn't like in the Ve- every year of the Vegas year, the year before that. It's always you get the start to end of each competition. You know what's funny? What I had no idea they did that because in the YouTube yeah. version they have the whole competition, the whole thing. Yeah, they, it was just every competition with its own segment. Like it, they didn't break it off like they did in the. Uh, oh, this the was they pretty much one person would go on a, a different segment. They do the dunk dunk tank thing and then they'll do one uh of breakaway challenge and then something and it was just like it's so convoluted it was just like i want to see everything of one thing first and then let's move on to the next one you know what i mean yeah yeah it's so funny because i think the first uh event that they have on the youtube version is that's a skater yeah, and and I think they they had a throwaway line of like, oh, and we'll have the final later on tonight, and then like to, they do the first round or whatever. And, and that's then, the other thing. But then they edit it, and it's like, oh, it's the final time, and it's Vashikov versus Fiala, and I'm like, oh, okay. I like, think did they later... do that? Did they do that last year? I don't think they did. I the, don't remember. W- no, we're like, like the. I, would, I feel like I would remember if they did. Or fastest skater was like they all went, and then they go again. The last, the top two. No, they did. They did do they that. They did that. Oh. It's just it was just all in one event, though. Like I. Yeah, I know. This time they split it up, which is really really stupid. Again, tell us I'm wrong, but I do not remember them doing that last. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, maybe not, but Where'd they definitely. Didn't... <laughs> See, that's the thing. In house, in Ve- like I didn't watch the Vegas one on TV. Obviously, they didn't. They didn't split it up. It was all yeah. we got. Er- we got everything together. So I'm assuming you did too on TV. Yeah, and another complaint I have with the All Star. This is for the whole weekend, not just the skill competitions, but also the All Star game. This felt like the most low effort from the players than any year. You know, what was my issue was it what? not that it was in low effort because I think you could tell. Like, mm, and I not, get it; they're on vacation, not, or they want to be on vacation. Or they want to be on vacation. Look, looking at you, Kirill Kaprizov, who decided to not participate in anything. I, I know. Think he, <laughs> I think he did like a half ass like three on O thingy with the uh, goalie tandem thing. Well, he did the yeah, the goalie tandem thing. But that was it. The, like, he didn't even shoot. He just skated there and that was it. The uh, what what did they called it? I thought it was funny. Funny was the name for it. Something uh, ten something tendy. Isn't tendy tandem? Tendy tandem, yes. Yeah. <laughs> just a funny like, name. <laughs> like it was fine. Like it was, it was okay, but like, yeah, a lot of the players didn't really seem like they wanted to be there. Or another thing, like, both of both you and I watch wrestling, right? Yes. 
And one of the hardest things during the pandemic was these empty arena shows that that a bunch of wrestling companies had to do. Yes. Um and you and 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 in that we we kind of like learned. And I think we knew already, but we learned even more. We had like tangible proof that like you really do miss the reaction of the crowd for like certain moments or certain spots. Yeah. And let me tell you Miguel, the crowd being dead for the skills competition did not help sell it that this was no. fun or that people were having uh, you know enjoying themselves and things like that. Like this this weekend also the, the NFL had their all starting the pro bowl. Yes. And they kind of had the same issue where they they play football, but they weren't really playing football. So, you know, for a couple of years it was just terrible to watch. It was just bad because it was just no effort. So they changed it up this year. Um, they also had it in Vegas this year. But they had they changed it up from normal football to flag football and then a bunch of other competitions in between during during that uh, live event. Yeah. And the one thing that I could tell, at least through the broadcast, in, in, in comparing the NFL All-Star game and the and the NHL All-Star game is that they got they got the fans involved. You know, whether it was like, you know, throwing footballs into the to the arena hyping up the crowd, stuff like that, just interacting with them. Like, it looked like people were having fun. I think I think the Switch is still very awkward for the NFL to go do, but they're doing fun stuff, like having the linemen push a 800-pound 800, 800 wall together. Yeah. Or have the quarterbacks hitting drones, you know, from throwing positions, having competitions that way. And having a conference versus conference style, which I, I think they should go back to conference versus conference in the NHL. It's just, I don't know. Like, there's just... I don't know, something about East versus West kind of fits, or you do the thing they did a couple years ago, like a couple years ago, a long time ago, where the you have team captains and player just draft teams. I don't know, something to get them kind of involved, engaged, because the way that it's set up right now, you can see a lot of these guys just kind of going through the motions and just kind of, oh, we got to be here. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't feel like they have an obligation to put on a show. Um, and I think right now you have... You have a very serious uh, conversation about the NHL having the worst all-star game right now. I, I still think the NFL isn't great, but they're at least trying things. And I think next year in Toronto, by the way, surprise, surprise, Gary Bettman announced uh, the all-star games in Toronto next year. Yeah. That, that might give them leeway to go try something different. Because even the NBA, who has one of the better all-star games, and the MLB, who I think doesn't have to change at all because it's just the nature of the yeah. game lends itself to be like the most normal uh, in comparison to regular games. Even the NBA had to switch up its rules to make it just more dynamic and interesting. I, I would say the NFL one's better produced and more fun because the players actually look like they're enjoying themselves. Yeah. But I still think the NHL one is better. If that makes sense, but not by a lot. No, this not by like, a lot. This is a this is a we're we're pulling hairs here to figure out like the, what the, makes this the, the problem. With, and the big my biggest problem with also the whole and All Star Weekend in general. Jesus, man, these hockey players have no personality. No, no, they do not. They watching it live was so tough because the fact that they were jumping around. There's so much dead, like dead, dead air, I guess, or like yeah. so much filler in between each segment, which was really annoying. Like, and, and that's the problem. Feel, with, and you feel bad for the interviewers. <laughs> and that's the problem. Anything out of them. That's the problem with doing these jumping around so much that there's so much talking in between of these reporters, these girls, these guys talking to NHL players who have absolutely nothing to say. <gasps> No, like not. they uh they were interviewing or talking to Patrick Maroon and I don't I don't remember I should have looked this up I don't know there were, I, I don't even know it'd be easy to find but the reporter she's like all excited oh you excited to be here in the festivities here in Florida for the weekend Patrick Maroon yeah that is all he said yeah 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 and she's just kind of like yeah you ever seen <laughs> you ever seen like those awkward uh <laughs> Like messages, I think it like sometimes on Reddit or or maybe TikTok of like these people who can't have conversations, right? These people yeah. who go on dating apps and stuff and go, "Hey, oh, what are you up to? Nothing. 
What are you doing? Uh, just oh. up here. And it's like nothing. There's no conversation to be had. That is every NHL interview Blair. ever. Yeah. It's like and a then, first date trying to learn anything about him. What do you, Miguel? It's called the All Star Game, right? We talked to many yeah. All Stars. Give me one fun fact about anything. Ovechkin nice. has a son. That's it. That's all I learned this weekend. He has a son. His name is Sergey, and he shoots left instead of right like his dad. And his dad wanted him to shoot right, but hey, can't win every battle. That's all I learned during this stupid All Star Game weekend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that Montreal doesn't have a Chipotle. <laughs> That's, that's it that's, that's a fun it. fact that's a fun Jesus. fact Jeez. also and there, there's another one and they're now starting game the pacific versus uh the central the central thank you right away Mc, mckinnon first first time on the ice he scores first shot he's on the bench the lady comes up to him and i forget i don't i don't remember the lady's name i'm sorry it's- Emily Kaplan, who did a lot of the the okay. Interview. He's like, hey, Nate. She's like all pumped up, excited. Hey, Nathan. Uh, it's pretty huge for you to come out here on such a hot start. And he looks at her, what? Like what uh, angrily. <laughs> yeah. She's Why like are you talking to me right now. He's like, she's like, oh yeah, you're in a hot start. And he's like, me? What? He's like, yeah, you scored on your first shot. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a important to play hard and try in these here comes, here comes can's fucking answers i was so oh my i was so embarrassed i was secondhand embarrassed like that's so bad it's so bad it, you, you know i had an idea though i was because because miguel we're complaining a lot and you know yes we're, we are a constructive show all right yes i don't know if we're a good show but we are the best show <laughs> Can write that one down but look here, here's my idea you know what would be decent and, and i don't know if this would work yeah but espn tries and i know they have a lot of decent personalities on there maybe you need to get some of these content creators these newer generation folks to kind of breathe new life into it you know uh your nasher you know uh steve dangle isn't young but he's at least on youtube you know what i mean content creators like that to kind of help bridge conversations or or points to talk about instead of this like normal interview setup that they have for these all-star games at least on the espn side like you yeah I, you I, I do think good, though, but they're missing I, something i will say this i think you're right i'm, I'm with you 100 percent. i do think these content creators nasher uh dangle the bar down crew yeah bar down great, great think, example I think they would get better answers and reactions out of players than and these reporters are like so they're doing a good job, but they're ask they're also asking like are you having fun this weekend? <laughs> like like just my favorite like, yeah. one of my favorite interviews, Miguel, was Eric Carlson. Right? Uh-huh. He's talking about like uh, you know, it's sometimes one of his lines and I remember this correctly, you know, sometimes you need a vacation away from the vacation. And I'm like, Eric, you're at the fucking thing right now. <laughs> and and most of it's like, yeah, I'm having my kids here and they get to experience it. But like, what about you? Uh, help us help you. How do we have you enjoy this? Because clearly, yeah, I think, that, here. I think that'd be fun. Like I said, just like I said, get, get in the get. Uh, I mean, Nasher was there, but obviously he wasn't there working. He was just oh. there. And I'm sure like Bart Allen was there too. But like. Like, I don't know enough consecrated, but like stuff like that to kind of like, I don't know, just breathe something and have these segments kind of feel different. Because from not, right now, like you said, they're jumping. And I, I guess the YouTube version paid off for me because I didn't really feel that. And I, you know, that and that's the biggest thing. The also. skills, the skills competition should have been an hour, one hour compact show, not a two and a half hour dragged out. I believe the, bore. the VOD is an hour 30. Which was still okay. Good. It wasn't too bad. Then that's fine. Better than two and a half hours, where there's a lot of, a lot of like nothing. killing time, a lot of filler, like. But yeah, like I don't know, like you just need to find a way to invest. Like, also, the brick the breakaway challenge this year was terrible. It made me miss John Ham. <laughs> you know. <laughs> made me miss John Ham. Who knew that Alex Petrangelo would have had a better <laughs> attempt than any of these this year? We had references to Happy Gilmore and Miami Vice. They were so bad. And I love Happy Gilmore. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. And Ovechkin using a chid. 
We already had that last year. His name was Jack Hughes. He used a child. I need a new gimmick here. Ovi. I do, and I love during the the shootout competition, whatever breakaway, whatever it's called. Trevor Zegras tweeted out a sleeping emoji. <laughs> That's good. I don't know. Maybe the, <laughs> maybe the NBA, the, the NHL needs to take a page out of the NBA, where like the skill competition doesn't have any of the stars in the NBA. It just has the best players who do those yeah. things a part of it. And it used to have the stars do the slam dunk competition, which I guess. That's what like you could you could use the, the shootout break or something. Or, it's like, I don't know, like look at last years. year's Trevor Zegras, the dodgeball blindfolded uh, like Spinner Rooney, whatever you want to call it. That was amazing. Yeah, I don't know. The Jack Hughes magician with little Jack Hughes. That was, was fun. Great. Yeah, it was great. It was it was it was varied enough where I'm like, all right, this is kind of cool. Um, but I don't know, like honestly. There could be like little tweaks and stuff like, like yeah, for the the tendy tendy tandem that you like, where the players come, like one goalie tries to score a like a goal across. That the was ice. I like the idea. I don't think I like the idea. The the only thing that sucked. So like okay, I was I was gonna get into this one. So that one, you teamed up the two goalies. So it was uh, Logan Thompson and uh, fuck who. Huh? Stuart Skinner. Soros. Il Soros. No, Il Skinner, sorry. Yeah. Versus Hel- Hellebuck and Soros. And so one shoots, one blocks. Logan was a defender. He did he did well. He but he faced a lot of two two twos and threes and a few ones. On the opposite end, uh freaking Skinner. He was the one that was shooting so that Hullabuck could defend. And he was missing the net <laughs> all day. Yeah. Like, Hullabuck was just facing one on ones the whole night, pretty much the whole night. Yeah. And I'm like, he's going to stop those all the time. You know what I mean? Something's going to happen, but like, yeah. Like, that's, that, that's kind of cool. I like the feature of that stuff. But honestly, no, it was cool. Yeah. I was just. Honestly, for that one, the way I would improve it, just have college kids, local college it's just... kids. This is back to back year where it feels like the Pacific just doesn't give a shit, which is it breaks my heart because I want to see the Pacific win. You know what I mean? I do too, but I'm like, I'm also like, I get it. I but they were so understand. like the Pacific shooters were so low effort on the All Star game. They were so low effort. Like honestly, like this isn't to to, to pat my own back, but I think Kevin Fiala had one of the most like effort out of the Pacific Division because like I can't. Remember, also, it's kind of fucked up because McDavid does everything and it just looks easy. So maybe he was not yeah. trying, but he's still Connor goddamn McDavid. And that's the other thing. I mean, he got robbed. Nazan Kadri was a good, like, yeah. three feet in front of him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. A controversy, I guess. <laughs> it's crazy, man. And freaking uh, on the shootout, the winner won in the final round with like 14 seconds. When McDavid killed that in the first round with a nine second. But I feel like it's... that always happens. I feel like the, the 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 final is always a letdown. Both of uh, McDavid's attempts were better, which is crazy. Yeah, he had one where he didn't miss, but he was just a little bit slower. Yeah, because the first one was 9.3 something. His seven finals was 10, 10.612. And then the winner was Brock Nelson with 12.419. Just doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Uh, it is what it is. Might Either way. For, for skills competition. So. Yeah. And then the one competition, you know, it's funny. I, just, I feel like people are caring less and less about this each year. The hardest shot. You know what they need to do for that? We need some sort of pyro or something. That like, would be cool. Yeah. When they of, hit over a hundred, if they hit over a hundred, like yeah. or some sort of meter, you know what I mean? That like fills yeah. up. And like instead of you just see a number flash up, you know what I mean? You know how like those strongman thingies, you like hit a hammer and the bell goes up. It goes doo 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 Give me give me give me some sort of visual for it. Because honestly, hard honestly shot, what hard shot is cool, but it is cool. You just have to wait until the number tells you. Also, man, Ovechkin did terrible on the hardest shot. He he think the post ones. It was just like, yeah. Again, I don't think he's trying that much. 
No, and he's old now. Yeah. Young Ovi probably probably would have done better on this. I think like you said, I think with the All Star they just gotta it's gotta the skills competition's gotta be the just the ones that are best at these things that wanna be there. And ultimately the younger people, the younger players. I know they don't have the star power, but they have more personality. You know what I mean? And they might have more fun with it. And honestly that unless you're matters. Nick Suzuki, who also didn't have personality, but, but honestly, like, Honestly, that matters more, though. Like, be fun, be good. Like, you want to see the best. You want to see Trevor Zegers handle the puck, even though he's not an all-star. Martin Furk, like, I know he's in the AHL. I know he plays the shot. Same. Yeah. He's fucking 109 miles an hour. Like, he has the hardest shot. He just does. Like, see that. You know what I mean? But uh, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what they do for Toronto. I hope they do switch it up, though. But, I, but by all, like, criticisms, fire from everybody. I mean, they got it. It being in Toronto, it being in Toronto, and they love their whole specialty thing. Like you said, they're, they're two specialty skills. Yeah. You got to imagine what they're gonna do something like at the Hockey Hall of Fame, like or, or outside the Hockey Hall of Fame, right? Someone shoot a puck off the CN Tower. Give me that. I don't think he. I don't Drake, think he's safe. Drake, Drake safely do sitting, that. Drake is sitting up there, and we have some sort of competition up there. Any any last words on the All Star? I'm happy it's over. Me too. All during this break, or maybe it was before the break, we had a pretty big trade between Vancouver Canucks sending Bo Horvat to the New York Islanders, and then the Islanders sending back Anthony Bouvier. Nope. How do you say that? Nope. Bovillier. Bovillier. Not even close. At- Aturati. Yeah, basically. And uh, first round pick for this upcoming draft. It is protected, though. Although I have top, heard. Top 15, prospect, I believe. I have heard his name pronounced Aturatu, so it might also be that. I don't speak Finnish. I don't know. And then a few days later, Islanders signed Horvat to eight year, eight by eight. 8.5, actually. 8.5, sorry. So, What a weird uh, announcement for the extension because the uh, GM of the old New York Islanders, 80-year-old oh, man, it's... Lou Lamarillo, just basically talked about the uh, extension. He negotiated too long, too much money. Great, what? great job, Lou. <laughs> great job. What a weird what a... comment. You know what I mean? What an old man. What an old man. I, 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 we should have, I would love to us to find an Islanders fan that we could talk to someday. And how do they feel about this 80 year old man running this team? Cause a lot of his decisions are kind of curious and I do think it's good for them. Like they need someone who can score. And that's Dave. Uh, that is called, I was going to call it David Bowie Horvat. Bo Horvat. He can score. He doesn't play make much. He doesn't pl- uh, drive play too much, but the, the one thing he can do is score the old puck. Uh, so we'll see if it works. I'm, I'm interested to see what lineups we have. Because this still doesn't really give, I think one of the biggest holes that the Islanders have is they don't have a number one center. But maybe you go with two good, maybe like two B options with Barzell and Horvat. And then late in the game, yeah, put them together. You put Horvat at center, Barzell on the wing for when you need a goal late in the game. So maybe you do that. I don't, yeah. know. I don't really know how, the, how, uh, how Horvat's going to fare. In this like slower defensive uh, Islander scheme, but they needed goal scoring and they went and they got it. Yeah, we are three weeks away from the trade deadline, and thought you were gonna say for my wedding. I was like, what a what an occasion. And things are gonna get spicy real soon, but we'll buy, we'll talk about that next week because I think three weeks is still a little far off for rumors and speculations and what your team needs before we jump off this do you think do you who, do you think but bester leaves vancouver now oh yeah i think so i think so Man. It, it is going to be real interesting to see exactly what they do because i still think i know i know a lot of the mistakes done in vancouver's roster construction was done by jim benning but jim rutherford signing to that jt miller extension now looks like a terrible idea it's got a. I feel. I feel for the Vancouver fans because you're coming off a rebuild. By the way, Miguel. Fun fact: trade deadline. 
on my wedding date. So we we might be at the altar where we have to break. Oh my god! And just start recording there. I'm gonna just yell, Eric. Get Patrick <laughs> Kane to the, the Golden Knights. L.A. or <laughs> L.A. pick up uh, Jacob Chikrin. Now give me give me Chikrin. You know, that's a dream. Also, Demko would be nice too, but like that'd be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Holy shit! I didn't realize your wedding's in three weeks. It is. Get ready. You better fucking get ready. We will see. Anyways, enough of the the downers. You know what's funny? That's exactly how I framed. I had, I, I tweeted out something to like, oh, I'm excited to be recording with Miguel today. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Oscar game and his next topic. And let me tell you, I'm only excited about one of these. This is the thing that I'm excited about, Miguel. Tape to tape. Tell me about it, Eric. It's a video game. Next question. See, look, that's exactly how fucking hockey players answer. What are you supposed to do with that, Miguel? <laughs> that is 100%. Jesus Christ. They don't feel bad just leaving the interview to dry like that? Like, I felt bad with my answer right there. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, video game created by a small indie studio from Quebec. Uh, they've, I believe, for the past couple of years, they've they've done a Kickstarter campaign to get this going. Um, it's a roguelike hockey game. So if you like roguelike games, and Miguel, you can help me out here because I'm done with video games. Roguelike is like your Hades, your uh, Castlevania. No, it's Metroid. One of the Met, the side-scrolling Metroids. Is that a roguelike? Castlevania. Yeah. It's yeah. It's so those. I would say birthed the roguelike, but those I would not call roguelike. About adjacent to that, where you're you're on a you're on a journey. Uh, this time though, you're playing hockey games, Miguel. We were lucky to get get a week advance. Uh, demos out now if you're interested to play it. Just tape to tape on Steam. Um, but it it does have it. You could see its inspiration of like the the art. I don't want to see the art style of like Hades, but like that kind of like simple. Uh, art style mixed with the the old school video game feel of NHL 94 and I remember when we were playing it Miguel we were talking about uh, the NHL uh, 94 kind of relaunch they did with NHL 21 I want to say yes where they re-released it with like new team well with like upgraded teams and all that stuff but like the gameplay they did nothing and that no, included NHL, not having no. and, and that included not having online play which was a bummer it was this just is, a sim- simplification. Yeah, and, that's... and we played it, and it does, you could, you definitely do see the, the kind of, um, what do I want to call it? The, uh, the influence that NHL 94 had on this. And oh, it, 100%. It's just, it took all the best parts of it. And like, let's, and Im- then... let's improve it for now. And the graphics are cool. I like them. They're very simple, but I like them. Um, I'm interested to see, uh, currently on a demo, you only have chapter one. But basically, in the story mode part of the game, and you also, there is online play, Miguel. We and I, you and I played a game. Yeah, we did play a game. But in the online game, you play as, a, as an old uh, hockey player looking to return hockey to its former glory. And on the journey, you play a bunch of these, you go to like town to town, stuff like that, and you recruit. Um, and you hockey also players. Hockey yes. players, and, and you get power ups along the way. I'll do a little spoiler thingy um, at the end of this chapter, at least for chapter one. There is a boss battle at the end of it. And it was kind of an interesting take on, like, it was weird to fight, having a boss fight in a, in a, in a fucking uh, hockey game. So before we get to the boss, because I, it absolutely just, it had me laughing. Like, it was, it was great. But before we get to the boss, so yeah, yeah, the story mode, it's roguelite, so you choose a path. You can either go up or down. One usually it just changes because it's roguelike, so it changes. It's not the same for everybody. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's the same for everybody it's the bosses essentially. So you path. Do you have two paths to choose from? One, you kind of do training, so you can up your stats, or maybe get a booster card. Which when you play games and you win, you get random boosters. Where one is like, oh, your team plays better in the second period. Another one's like your team plays better when you're you're down in the game. My my Another, favorite so far that I found in one of those is uh the ref helps you hit yes. the other team. Yes, the ref helps you. He hits the other team. That's my favorite one too. 
And then the other half is play like a one period game, first to one, first to two type game, and you win and you get a booster, and then you go on. Then there's like sub bosses, or I don't know what you would call it, where those are like two period games, but you can also 4 0 a team and beat them that way before a full two periods. And you recruit new recruit at that moment. You don't recruit new players, but I'm assuming you will I'm assuming, eventually. I'm assuming down the road, yes. Although I played, so I played through the story mode twice. There's so much I liked it, and just to see how much variety was it, and there's pretty good variety because after the first two games in the second playthrough, I was offered a trade. Which is something that did not yeah. come up for me the first time I played it. You know what's funny? I didn't. I've played it three times. Have not had that happen to me. Oh, see, I, so I got offer for uh, Chico Cholo. I forgot his name is Chico or oh, Carlos Chico. Okay. Yeah, and, and for way, sir, when we played against each other, Carlos Chico fucking lit me up with you playing as. Him. Oh, I know he was he was the best player on the ice. But I did trade him away for this knight guy, where he's dressed up like a knight. He has like the helmet, a full. And he has his ability to shoot the puck at someone's head. Could be your own teammate. It's it is great, and he's like a foot taller than everyone else on the ice. It's that, that so honestly was, when we uh, when I introduced you to the game when we were playing first period. Yeah. I didn't tell you about the superpowers or yeah. Or the, so yeah, you have certain players have superpowers. And I remember telling you uh, them in the second period. We're like, all right, well, look, you see that icon above his head? If you hit triangle. He'll throw the stick at somebody. Yeah, because Eric kept on doing this magnet thing. Yeah. And, and I remember, I'm like, how are you doing that? We were playing on Discord, and I couldn't see you because, yeah, the, the way your setup works to plug in a controller, you know, webcam. But I can yeah. aud- I, I audibly heard you go, <gasps> as soon as you nailed <laughs> one of my guys. Yeah, a, I love that. On it. a breakaway. <laughs> yeah, where one just flings his stick, and it's just the best ability ever. No breakaways with that guy around, I'll tell you right now. It's just it it does such a good job of like balancing this like party aesthetic of like with these crazy power ups, but also like we've seen when we played against each other, Miguel, we could see us kind of using the uh, NHL like twenty three skills that we have. We're like, all right, we're going behind the net, we're going low to high, cross crease, all that stuff, and you can kind of. It's weird to say in a game like this, but cycling the puck actually is helpful. Yes, um, it is. And like I've shot from the point, I've had it tipped in go in and the the key the, the 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 moment i knew this game was good is i was playing the story mode and i didn't win but i hit the post about seven times and i was oh my so god i know aggravated <laughs> by the end of it where i'm like no this is hockey i'm here and um all this all the sound development in the game is so good like that the post sound is good the the little feature in front of the at the start of the game where they do the national anthem is more fucking effort than NHL's done in I know, and it's cool because it's like zooms in on the players' faces. It's like the camera's going across, which happens in real NHL games. They get like in their facial yeah. reactions and they do a spotlight on your like your best player, your captain and stuff. Yeah. And like all that little things is just good effort. The goal horn's good. I, I think eventually they're gonna add like announcers and stuff. But even with just hearing most of the time when I play NHL anyway, I turn off the commentating after like a month. Because the lines get repetitive and stuff like that, and I, and I do like to hear you know the skates and all that stuff, and it it sounds good, and the goalie as funny as they look, they actually look sometimes play like, yeah, that's a real like desperation save for him going side to side or, you know, there's times where you're mad at your goalie because he's completely lost and it isn't this kind of like, I don't know, like when we play in a show and the goalie doesn't do something, it it looks like it's an accident, but like in this, the goalie's completely lost and it feels like no, that makes sense. He's just, he moved a certain way. We deked him and he's, he is lost on purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the positioning of the goalie is like pretty good. Like the AI is pretty decent. I haven't played it on the hardest level yet, but I probably will. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I haven't tried the hard mode yet. Even starting off like that, like it's, 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 it's fun. And I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of customization you do as, as you, you have your team in this kind of roguelike stuff. And it's going to spark actual good conversation like we had right now where, I play. I think did both of us play Hades? Yeah, I did. I never beat it though. I kind of got bored of it. But I remember talking about it. How like, oh, I've gotten this weapon here, and that really helped. Yeah. Like, oh, I haven't seen this shit at all, or whatever. And like, that'll be cool to see. Like, where our I think both of us are going to play it a lot. Like, where where our teams end up by the end of the story. Yeah. So I mean, at the okay, now we can talk about the first boss. The well, first boss. 
Huh? Well, First boss of the demo. I'm assuming it's gonna be the same for everybody. I'm assuming this doesn't change. Yeah. The officials. A team of referees. And just beautiful. First off, it blends in with the uh, actual referee, so it's so hard to tell <laughs> who's real and who isn't. Who's real and who isn't? Because at first I'm like, wait up, are they playing? Do they have more players? I'm like, no, it's the regular referee. One thing I would have done if I was them differently. It's not a criticism. It's just. I wonder if we have the su- same idea. I wonder if we have a suggestion. The ref should have helped them. Like, it should have been in their favor, which would make well, it funnier. It did. Ha- did you score a goal? The first goal. So no, I score. They get these fuckers are, are good. So if they score on me first, and oh my god, their celebration is just the best. It's all to do the hand signal for a good goal, good goal. <laughs> which, good goal. which is the funniest shit ever. You have six six fucking refs telling you it's a good goal. So I finally I struggle I struggled with them. I finally scored on them. Okay, cool. Then I st- I score the. The lead goal, the goal and they fucking point. call it off. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> they call it back. <laughs> it's one of those things where I should have seen it coming, but I did but it the I first time, it. and I was so mad. I know. Oh. I legitimately laughed out loud, like legitimately loud, loud. I was like, "That is freaking genius." That honestly, is honestly made me mad. Where I'm like, "Okay, you want to play like this?" I'm just gonna start fucking working, you guys. Oh, there, it was tough. That the boss fight was legitimately it was. tough. It was also, you know, the funny part of the first time I played it, I had the power up where the ref helps you. So even though yeah. he called back that first goal that I scored to take the lead, oh, he was still hitting them. He yeah. was still beating the shit out of the other refs. Same on the first playthrough, I had that power up too. So he was beating the shit out of the ref. I, their goalie was phenomenal. I could not yeah. score. That was one of the. That's one of the games that I lost. Was a was a, the second playthrough was. It was at that boss level, and I just kept hitting every fucking post. It was just annoying. It was aggravating. I agree. I agree. It was just annoying. But, like, one of the ideas I wish they would have done is somehow during the game, they just switch into becoming who's a real ref. But <sighs> so you have so the refs all That'd be funny. playing a lot. The one, I only have one criticism of this game. One single criticism that is it at the moment. Obviously, it's only demos, only a small vertical slice. But when you switch sides, your camera does not switch. Yeah, I would like to keep playing on one, one way up or down. Yeah, I hate. I hate. I'm sure. I'm sure it's on purpose, and I'm sure it's to make it more difficult on you. Yeah, and I get it. I get it. But man, it just annoys me. Oh no, it's it's shooting down the first time I played it and, and the second period starts and you have to go downward. It's one of the hardest things ever. And I mean it's more when I'm shooting the other way, I'm I'm mainly just defense. I'm just trying not to get scored on. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I think all my like highlight reels I recorded a couple of, of things and I'll probably post it on my Twitter like I did today. Uh of some of the more cool goals I have. None of them are going downward on the second period. It's all first and third periods where I can figure out a shooting. So that, that that would be my only complaint as well. And I think both of us were thrown off it the first time we played together. But like, other than that, like it's fun. Um, I'm excited to see what else they add to it. And uh, I'll say because I enjoy the off brand team names. I hope and I'm and I'm sure it won't. I'm sure this won't be the case. I hope like. The whole the officials, the referees as a team. I hope that wasn't like their one like trick up the sleeve. I hope they have more. Like I hope they have like a mascots team, a I don't know, an owners team, like stuff like that. Just funny little things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There has to be where they can not necessarily cheat, but they'll they'll do stuff differently. Where like they said, the referees, they put they 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 called my goals back. They called one of my goals back. What what I would love, and I think for like, I hope the referees come back again. There are no penalties in this game, an arcade no. game. No one goes in the box. But could you imagine you see them a second time and they just keep calling <laughs> bullshit penalties on you? Or if they actually call off sides, like oh, against God, you kill only. Me. Kill me if that happens. <laughs> it's so funny. The first time I play this and my guy skates outside, I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing, dude? Get back here!" Exactly. And then you, then you tell me, "Oh, there's no off sides here." I'm like, "Oh." Cool. And then I pa- immediately pass it to the guy that was 
in your zone already. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man, tip to tape, fun game. I'm excited to. Oh. Look, we haven't been this excited about a fucking hockey game in forever, Miguel. I agree. I am I, like yeah, that's yeah. the only thing that sucks about playing this devil. I'm itching oh, for more. Oh, we're probably gonna play a couple times, like one on one. Oh, we're gonna, and that, and that's the great thing about the demo is you can do online play. Yeah. Obviously, limited teams and players, but still, like, ooh, that little bit was so much fun. God, I, honestly, I would love to talk to developers, and maybe we'll try to arrange something. And just, I would love to hear what they're there. They are from Quebec, so I'm assuming they're Canadians fans. But just the inspiration to match to mash a roguelike game and, and its features was was a fucking hockey arcade game. Because it works so well. And I'm oh, excited to see what kind of teams I get to build and all that stuff. And uh, being able to play online or um, even before the demo was live, they had that remote play feature on Steam. So we could just play online without you having the game yet. Uh, but you know, you know, the thing that sucks. Well, not sucks. It's good for them. But like the Kickstarter is over. Mm-hmm. The game has been funded. Amazing. Awesome. I'm glad. But I was looking at their like what you could back. Yeah. And one of them was for three hundred Canadian dollars. You could be in the game oh, damn as, it. as as one of the fans, as one of the fans. And I think five hundred is an actual player. And I'm like, I I probably would have done it. The the, the fan one, the three hundred dollar one. You know what I mean? There is a Latino team called the Chicago Calaveras on there. Ooh. You telling me you and I couldn't have been defensemen in this game? You know. <laughs> That feels. I, I'm sad. I didn't yeah. find this game earlier because oh, I hundred. I would have obviously would have backed it up immediately, and I, I probably would have gone for one of the, the the upper tier just just to get. You know. You know. We should negotiate. What a Pacific revision on the old uh, ad boards there. Get some ad space on us. That'd be amazing. Cause yeah, like so, like these are the. Re- I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter because we can't. You can't back the game anymore. Twenty dollars Canadian gets you the early bird game. Twenty five just the game. Forty dollars beta access. Sixty dollars digital art book and soundtrack. One twenty five physical art book. One fifty physical hockey cards of the players in the game, which is awesome. Two hundred dollars gets you a name a player. Three hundred gets your face in the crowd. Plus, all these include the previous rewards. If you don't know how how Kickstarter works. 500 is design a player and then four thousand dollars was design a team which i mean we had that kind of money could uh, a pacific revision team would have been great but you know, we don't got that kind of work. you know what the series would have been what we start with like 10 bucks i go visit you in vegas and we just gamble our way to t- to, to the money oh my god that would have been great it, in reality, it is four thousand Canadian, so it's much less than not much less, but it's less yeah. than American dollars. It's still a lot of money. <laughs> it's still it's still three thousand. Yeah. It's like four hundred dollars, probably. What a game! What it would have been no. It would have been two thousand nine hundred seventy-three dollars. Still a ton of money. Way more than money, I have. But a, but a little bit more affordable. <laughs> but a little more affordable. Oh man. <sighs> Again, uh, shout out to Mike Toundro of uh, Vicarious PR, who who gave me a little uh, early access to the game and allowed us to play a week ahead of the demo releasing to everybody. And if you like hockey, if you like fun arcade games, go check it out. Null Games, I believe, is a developer. Uh, let me double check that. The developer is... Oh, right, yeah. Null Games. Uh, Just had so, it. Excellent. Rectangle is the developer. Null Games is the publisher. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you for fact checking. So give them a shout out. Uh, they are at tape to tape underscore game on Twitter. Uh, you know, give them a pat on the back. You know, what I mean, tell them you're excited to play the game. Uh, tell them uh, we sent you and that we'd love to talk to them about how did they come up with this wonderful, wonderful, fun time of a game that I, I haven't felt this way about a goddamn hockey game in forever. And it's nice. Miguel, do you have anything else? Oh, I just, I can't wait. I can't wait for the full release of Tape to Tape. I hope so. Right now, they don't really say what platforms it's going to be on. So at the moment, Steam is the only place you can get the demo. I'm assuming they'll be on every console. I hope they are. I cannot wait to play the full game. Can't wait to see what they have. And yeah, generally excited. Either way. Until next time, you can find me at Miguel Kicks all over the internet. Collectors Lobby on YouTube. 
Eric, where can the people find you? I just follow tape to tape underscore game with our Pacific Revision Twitter account. You should follow that at Pacific Revision. You can follow Eric at underscore Eric Oriana, D R I C K O R E L L A N A. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube. Search Pacific Revision. Help us get to 100 so I can say youtube.com slash Pacific Revision instead of youtube.com slash a bunch of numbers. Help us out. Yes. But for now, Miguel, send us home. For all you people listening and watching, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate each and every one of you, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. Goodbye.